Greetings today. My name is Jaron. I'm a campus minister at AACC, and today we're going to be talking about the gospel. We're going to start off with using a scriptural definition of what the gospel is and what the word means. The word gospel means the good news or good tidings or tidings of reward for good things. And so that word there specifically, we're going to understand what what the good news is, how, how that applies to our life. You know, if it's good news, I want to hear it, right? And so when we go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, Paul gives us what that definition is. He says that it's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So from the jump, we understand that the gospel, what it is, is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. So that's the good news. That's what the gospel is. And it's significant because it's done in all the accounts of the gospel. The accounts of the gospel is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. It's in those books. Those are the accounts of the gospel. Those were his followers who wrote what he was doing while he was actively moving down here on earth. It's, it's what he was mo- where, when he was moving in the city. It's, it's the accounts of how he was acting and how he was accomplishing his earthly ministry. So that you find all the gospel taking place, the death, burial, and resurrection in those four books. In Jesus' name. So we're going to talk about what importance does it serve and, and why it's important because, you know, it's the good news. Why is that good news important? Why do I need to hear it? Why do I need to listen to it? So starting off with the death, um, we find that Jesus dies for our sins. In First Peter chapter 2, um, verse 24, it says that who himself bore our sins with his own body on a tree, that we having died to our sins, to sins, might live for righteousness. It tells us that. And so he dies for our sins and bore our sins for us so that we could have righteousness. That's the first thing that that death accomplishes. It's so that our sins can be removed from the scene. If we go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it says, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Explaining what the word remission there is just a fancy word for the word forgiveness. So without blood being shed, there is no forgiveness of sins. We find this in the Old Testament. We find it happening again in the New Testament. So there has to be blood shed for the remission of your sins. So God wants to forgive our sins, and that's what his death is going to do. And you go to verse 28 in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 20, uh, excuse me, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, it says, So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. So he offers himself to bear our sins again. And we understand that's what his blood is going to do. It's going to take away our sins. Going to a verse, a quick verse in Romans chapter 5, we say it says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even while we're still in our sin, he still pays the toll. He still pays that price of death that we, we were supposed to take. In Romans 6.23, it says all sin leads to death. You know, And so Jesus... He dies that death, that penalty for us, and he pays that price. And so that's the importance of the death. That's what the por- the death portion of this gospel serves, him taking our spot. And so death is required, so he sheds his blood for our sins, um, for that death to be um, taken. Excuse me. The burial takes place after Jesus dies on the cross. We see him... After he dies, they come and they bury him in the tomb. The stone gets rolled in place. And when that happens, you know, it's, it, it's fulfilling the scripture. This is all about what the gospel is about. It's about fulfilling the scripture that he, he, you know, you see him going through his earthly ministry. And he's always saying this is to fulfill what the prophet said. And this is to fulfill all righteousness. And he's always about fulfillment. He's always doing something for fulfillment. He always has a purpose in mind. And so that's what he does when he dies and he's buried He's buried. He's put in the tomb, and he's there for three days. But then he comes back out in new life after three days, and he promised his disciples that was going to happen. He told them that that was going to happen. So that's the death. He's buried, and then he resurrects. So that's what the gospel is. And so that's kind of the terrain we're going to be working with. But this is is what we're going to talk about next is just how we apply that to our life personally because that stuff happened about 2,000 years ago or so. And so That's old stuff. That's stuff that happened a long time ago. But there's a principle, there's a way that we can take that and apply it to our lives now, right? Because we still have sin in our lives. We still have 
a, a life that needs a, a, redeem, a redeemer and a savior to come. And so Jesus comes and he does all that stuff. But even now today, we can still take part in that. And so we're going to talk about how that connects. The death part portion of it we talked about, he dies for our sins. But what does death look like to us? It's repentance. Um, repentance, is it, it, it simply means to turn. The word repentance means metanoia, and that means a change of mind. When we change our mind and we say, Lord, God, this is the way I'm heading. I don't want to head this way anymore. I, I, want to, I want to see what you have for me. I want to change my direction. That's what repentance is. And so we focus our direction, our attention to him. That's what it is. And the burial, um, so it's, it's a death. It's a death to our sin, our old ways. And we put that aside and we give it to the Lord and we give him the opportunity. We give him the chance to do that. And so baptism is when we're buried with him. We bury our old selves, our old habits, our old ways of living, and we give that opportunity to the Lord to be able to do that. When you're buried, what that is in baptism, it's full submersion underwater in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what baptism is. And so we're buried, our old lives, our old sin is all covered under the blood that he shed for us, and, and we have a new opportunity to live again. And what that is is when his spirit comes and comes and lives inside of us is when we have the opportunity to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And there's evidence for that with speaking in tongues. And so that's what the Holy Ghost has to offer. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a few more scriptures because that's, the, that's, that's us obeying the gospel. That's how it gets taken. That's how it takes place because he dies a death for our sins. He's buried and then he resurrects with new life. So death, burial, resurrection, the same way that we repent, we turn and change from our ways and we need the Lord to do that. And then we're buried in baptism with him. We covered that part of our life, that aspect. Every portion of old living and habits are buried, and then we come back in new life, and there's empowerment with that, and that's the Holy Ghost. I'm going to um, talk about that for a split second. In, in Romans 6, 4 through 5, that's where, that's where it talks about his love being poured out, and um, it's, that's the fullness of his love. And the obedience of the gospel and the scriptures is fulfilled in Acts 2.38. I want to talk about that real fast briefly. It, it's the day of Pentecost. It's fully come, and um, Peter, he's standing with the, the other 11 apostles, and, and, and they're in a room. The Lord tells him to tarry and wait in Jerusalem, right? And so he already died, and he was um, buried and resurrected at this point. He tells them, tarry in Jerusalem, and they do so. And as they're doing this, um, he tells them, you know, go wait and pray. And they're, they're praying in the upper room, and, and God's Spirit begins to move. And after that, they get filled with the Holy Ghost, and people come, and, and they're asking about what's happening, right? And Peter tells them, repent and be baptized, every single one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That right there is the reward. That's, that's the gospel being fulfilled, because the gospel means good news. What is that good news? That means that there's a way of out of, out of life, a life of sin and mistakes and sorrow. There's a way out of that. There's a way that I can return and change I, I, can, I can repent and my life be changed and turned around. There's a way that my whole past can be buried and that comes through the waters of baptism that can all be covered under the blood. And there's a way that I can have a new life and that comes through him and his spirit. That's what the good news is. It's that life in Christ. That's, that's, that's what he ultimately wants us to have. It's that fulfillment. We see him fulfilling scripture. We fulfill, see him fulfilling what he was supposed to do. When we obey the gospel, we're going to have that fulfillment of life. And that comes through Jesus Christ. It's the only way. That gift of the Holy Ghost is a new life in Christ. That's what it ultimately is and it's what it's about. And that's what the gospel is. It's just the good news. But the way that we take a, a part of that is the death, burial, and resurrection as we see Paul mention in the beginning, I, I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, it says, you know, it talked about it was the death, burial, and resurrection. We need to have those parts take place in our lives so we can have that full reward. And so that's ultimately what the gospel is, and it's what it's all about, in Jesus' name. Um, I'm just going to pray out real fast. Um, God, thank you, Jesus, for this time to be able to spend time in your word and, and learn more of you. Jesus, I pray that you would give wisdom and understanding and revelation, Jesus, to everyone who's watching this, God. I pray that you would open up our hearts to understand more of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We thank you, Jesus, for everything you're doing and who you are, Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless.